So I'm leaving the house out here in Texas farm and cattle country, and I'm headed to North Carolina to meet with a former firefighter turned farmer named Russell Hedrick, who's been utilizing drones uh, in his farming to get him some cost savings on fuel and other things, as well as increase his efficiency in his crop yields, all using DJI agricultural drones, the Agris line. So. Come with me, get on the road as we meet Russell. I'm Russell Hedrick. I'm a first generation farmer here in Hickory, North Carolina. We started farming back in 2012. We farm predominantly row crop, corn, beans, and small grain. What did you do before that? Because you've, you've led an interesting life. I was a career fireman for 12 years and farming always kind of fascinated me and I decided, you know, if I was going to give farming a shot, I was going to have to do it at least at a somewhat younger age. So I made the transition out of the fire department and into farming full time. Now that you've been farming, you've been doing that quite a while and kind of lead me through how that leads you to using drones. So being first generation, our focus has always really been on profitability. We've always tried to look at what new technology is out there, what can we implement on the farm to either one decrease cost of production or even if it does cost us more money, as long as we're seeing that return on investment, we try to look at anything that we're seeing on a two to one return on investment. And so, you know, we started looking at, you know, precision technology, guidance, RTK, um, then drones kind of came into the scene. And first year we had a, a person come out, they used a T30 and custom applicated, saw a really good bump. Next time we had somebody with a T40 come out and then we cover enough acres and we wanted to make enough passes that it just justified us to buy our own setup. When we're talking farming, we're not just talking, you use some drones, that's just another tool. Yeah. I was learning some really interesting things about how you're an innovator in a lot of different ways. One of them building your own corn planter. So yeah, I mean, most of the technology that we have on the farm and, and most of the equipment, we pretty much build ourselves. We find what we want to do. We kind of do the R and D on that for a season or two. And then, you know, once we see which direction we need to, you know, go towards, then we really jump both feet into it and make the investment to really ramp up that equipment. If you're going to be working 20 hours a day and as hard as farming is, um, I want to make money at it. So that's what we focus on. Have you seen changes in your crop yields? Our county average on corn is 100, 125 bushels. Our county average on beans is about 28 to 30. Um, last three years with our planter technology, our fertilizer bars, utilizing the drone, making those late season passes, our farm's uh, corn crop average across all our acres typically been in that 200 to 210, so we're almost doubling, if not double, the county average. And then, you know, looking at soybeans, we've been 75 to 80 bushel on beans. We set a state record in soybean yield in 2021 at 117 bushels, which is almost five times higher than our county average. And then 2022, we set a world record in dryland corn at 459 bushels. And do you just farm here in this area? Is there any other areas you farm? So we pretty much cover north of Lincoln in Lincoln County uh, through Catawba County. We used to farm Iredale and that was just too far of a drive with equipment. And then we've got another operation in Georgia. What kind of challenges have you had with the use of drones? What successes have you had with the use of drones? I mean, really, the the only challenge that we had with drones initially is, you know, um, the regulation on even being able to, to actually fly one legally. Um, flying a drone has not been hard at all. Best way came down, we did two days of training with them, and then after that, I felt completely fine loading that drone up and taking it out. But you know, going through uh, 107 and then I believe it's 137 and then heavy use and, and all these exemptions and getting through those FAA processes. And then North Carolina also has processes on top of that. That was probably more difficult to go through that than actually learning, you know, how do we properly use the drone, set it up. Um, I think there's, there's little fine tuning things that we can do depending on, you know, crop height or, you know, like the field we've been here today where we do have some terrain compensation issues. Um, you know, learning to, to go with the contour instead of up and down the hills has really helped us with our drone, um, efficiently keeping that crop canopy height. And I think there's still tons to learn with the drone, but the profitability for us is about every dollar that we're investing into the drone and that application, we're seeing $2 back out of that. We just recently saw last week articles coming out where now legislation is even targeting agricultural drones. What do you see the challenges there? 
It would have been about two months ago. There was an article that came out that was talking about uh, when the House passed the defense bill and it had the ban on DJI drones. I find it absolutely absurd. Um, as a farmer, we went to Washington, D.C. for three days. We met with representatives and everybody talked about a security risk, but I still haven't seen one yet. We've never heard of a drone being hijacked uh, in flight. Um, the cool thing to me as a producer was geofence. Never had heard that term till I bought my first drone, but the fact that DJI even went ahead and built geofences where we can't fly drones where we don't need to be really is even positive to me because people do make mistakes. I'm a farmer. I don't understand air traffic space like a, you know, a commercial pilot would. And the fact of, you know, even having that geofence there to keep me out of where I shouldn't be is really nice. It, it really does help me. I think there's a lot of political issues going on right now. You know, I've not felt unsafe about anything that we've used with DJI. The, the technology, you know, even if somebody was looking at me spraying over that corn crop, they have no idea what I'm using. I feel like everything that I've done so far on my farm is, is secure and the benefit outweighs the fear mongering. The benefit for me in seeing lower cost of production, increased in yields and higher return on investment is not only good for me, but it's also good for our, our rural economy. One of the things that we're doing, you know, the DTX trailer that we've got now, we've got three or four people that are coming on with us next year and we're gonna be doing custom drone services and helping other farmers throughout the state. So not only is it a benefit to me now, but now you have other producers that are gonna increase their return on investment. And the local economy that sees that money come in, the tax revenue, even on our business side, our business has been strong enough where you know we pay taxes like everybody else and the federal government sees a better tax increase because we're having a farm that's more sustainable and, and viable. It baffles my mind that they're coming after the one industry that absolutely matters. I mean, you can talk about banking, automobile business, building, it doesn't matter. Everybody's wanting to eat food three times a day. And at the end of the day, we shouldn't politically play with our agriculture commodities. Especially right now when we have changing climate that is making farming harder. Uh, and you were just talking today about the drought that you guys had in this area over this summer. and. Then also when we talk about the population increase that we're having for a lot of various reasons uh, in the U.S. right now. So let me ask just one more question and then I'll, I'll leave you alone. Yep. Uh, what advice would you give to farmers that are looking to bring drones in as another tool or someone that's looking to get into agricultural spraying with drones? I'll tell you right now, um, I've been working with the team at Best Way Ag now for over a year. There are other people that do sell DJI. The thing that impressed me the most is their dealer network. If I'm here and I have a, a wing break or something, whatever it may be, just need a battery, I've got a local dealer. And if you're looking at a drone, the technology is there. It doesn't matter if it's too wet in the field or if it rained the day before, I can still get out there. Um, even on the soil health stuff that we're doing where we can spread cover crops in the fall and get them out timely which then by the time I'm picking you know, corn with a, a corn header, the cover crop doesn't hurt it at all. I don't have to go back and seed those fields after harvest, which cuts down on my time in the winter. I've gotta be on the farm. So the time management and looking at how much time we're saving and also how much grain we're able to increase in production, that drone is probably one of the cheapest tools we've ever bought on the farm. Outstanding, any last words? I hope the U.S. government figures it out. I think that the, the government politics right now are hurting the American farmer and, and hurting us. And um, I hope that somebody hears those words and, and finally makes a change about it. You know, it was really great meeting Russell and seeing how he's using the Agris drones on his farmland. But unfortunately, within a few days of filming this, Hurricane Helene would cause massive flooding in the North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia areas. Russell spent days with other farmers flying in the Asheville area after the flooding to first locate victims that were trapped when their roads were washed out or bridges washed away, and then to use Agris drones or the fly car drone to fly food, water, and medicine to those people. So we appreciate the hard work Russell and his team did 
And our hearts go out to all of the victims of the tragedy that occurred in North Carolina.